Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. It is the 6th of March, a Tuesday, and of course, if you've been watching the news at all, you know that uh, probably the top international event has to do with the talks between Benjamin Netanyahu and our President Barack Obama. Mike Evans writes today, I'm in Washington, D.C., with top Israeli leaders. In a few hours, I'll be meeting with the Prime Minister. As I write, the meeting between President Obama and my old friend Benjamin Netanyahu is still going on. Mr. Obama is desperately attempting to persuade Israel not to attack Iran before the U.S. elections this November. The threat posed to Israel by an atomic Iran is no secret, writes Mike Evans. The, radi the radical Islamists have made it more than clear that they want to see Israel wiped off the map. And by the way, that's the expression they use. Israel must take action soon, or Iran will pass into uh, what Defense Minister Barak calls the zone of immunity. That is, that's the stage where their program is so advanced that it will no longer be stoppable by military action. And the Iranians are moving quickly in that direction. Uh, but Israel desperately needs U.S. help to launch a successful strike on Iran. And, of course, that is what all the talk is about in Washington right now. A concluding thought here from Mike Evans is very interesting, and I quote, the word here in Washington is that the Obama administration is using Israel's well-grounded fear of Iran's nuclear program as a bargaining chip in an attempt to extract major concessions regarding the Palestinians. And, of course, that would be Palestinian statehood. Uh, you yield on the question of Palestinian statehood, and we will help you with Iran. Uh, and so, uh, according to Mike Evans, that's what's going on behind the scenes right now. The stalled peace process, of course, is a thorn in the side of the president's re-election uh, campaign, and he would very much like to... Uh, solve that problem and is using force to do it, apparently. Uh, Obama, uh, Obama is being quite adamant in his uh, confrontation with Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, the, the president proposed three object, uh, objects uh, of, of uh, uh, interest with regard to Iran. Number one, the dismantling of the, the uh, uranium enrichment facilities buried underground at Fordo, which is a nuclear complex in Iran. Number two, the transfer of highly enriched uranium outside the country to international control, effectively removing the material for assembling a bomb out of Tehran's hands. And number three, a ban on uranium enrichment to a grade uh, exceeding 5% instead of the 20%. Uh, con uh, concentrated fissile fuel now being allowed. Uh, so the, our side, uh, the United States side, is, is bargaining to more or less dismantle that nuclear facility at Fordo in Iran. Netanyahu fired back, saying we can't uh, wait much longer. Iran has not one, but ten Fordos. In other words, he's saying... The problem is ten times larger than the United States is portraying it. Uh, and I'm quoting here from Debkafile, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu brought 14,000 pro-Israel lobby cheering delegates to their feet repeatedly, especially when he pledged Monday night, March 5th, never again will our people have to live in the shadow of annihilation. He was talking to APAC, the American-Israel Political, Political Action Committee, and uh, they were, believe me, they were ready for, to see Benjamin Net uh, Netanyahu uh, t take the initiative in this whole struggle. <clears throat> Netanyahu said time is growing short. Uh, in his speech to a to APAC, he set the record straight by declaring that Israel cannot afford to wait much longer. This was his central theme. Number one, uh, Iran doesn't have just one Fordo nuclear research facility. He says it has 10, and that time is growing short. And he says that Israel can't afford to wait much longer. And he lauded the president, by the way, for affirming that Israel was entitled to defend itself by itself. And, of course, that's been Netanyahu's uh, uh, 
attack his position all through this. Israel must be able to defend herself. Reading here from the Washington Free Beacon, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told President Obama that Israel would decide for itself whether to strike Iran. Quote, my supreme responsibility as Prime Minister of Israel is to ensure that Israel remains master of its fate. Netanyahu told that to Obama, and that's, that is a quote from one of the uh, statements that he made uh, in a sit-down uh, yesterday, by the way, uh, with the president in the Oval Office, Netanyahu pushed back against the administration's repeated attempts to dissuade Israel from attacking Iran. Quote, Israel must reserve the right to defend itself, and after all, that's the very purpose of the Jewish state, to restore to the Jewish people uh, control of our destiny, said Benjamin Netanyahu. <clears throat> and of course, in that APAC speech, uh, which was made, uh, he chastised uh, various people who uh, were engaged in what he called loose talk of war with Iran and urged uh, for a policy of diplomacy toward Iran, which continues to enrich Iran uranium and is suspected uh, of building a nuclear weapon. And, and the quote a minute ago that, that we read was that <clears throat> Officials really want to control the type of uranium uh, that Iran is able to produce. That is, they want the fissile fuel, the 20% uh, uh, enriched fuel, to be banned, replaced by 5% fuel, which would be sufficient to use for nuclear power plants, but could not be used to make a bomb. Now, that's the, the current tack. Israel, on the other hand, is saying, we don't have much time. <clears throat> if we wait much longer, uh, we will not be able to successfully attack Iran. And so it goes, the IAEA, uh, that is the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency inspectors, are still in the mix, and they have been allowed to inspect one nuclear facility at Tehran called Parchin, but as far as we know, the Fordo complex, which is the main complex, uh, is still outside, outside the, uh, the bounds for the IAEA inspectors. And so Iran continues to do uh, a great deal of research and development in the background. And I think it's pretty common knowledge now that they have the bomb. What will happen? <clears throat> what will happen? Well, the, you remember the, uh, the uh, news item we started out with from Mike Evans. Mike said, and, and I think this is all important to return to as as the central point in, in these negotiations. The word here in Washington is that the Obama administration is using Israel's well-grounded fear of Iran's nuclear program as a bargaining chip in an attempt to extract major concessions from Israel regarding Palestinian statehood. I really and truly believe that's at the center of the action right now. And the question is, Will the Palestinian state be allowed to grow and develop to the point that it can declare statehood with its capital in East Jerusalem? That's really the fundamental point. It's sort of a behind-the-scenes point right now, but politically it is the point. As always, I would remind you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, as uh, given in Psalm 122. Uh, pray that uh, those of sound minds would have uh, the ability to influence matters uh, in a way that would be a blessing to Israel. And of course, we're still watching Israel because it's God's timepiece in Bible prophecy. And we urge you to watch too. Gary Stearman reminding you to keep looking up. <laughs>